will be ordained as teacher. Jeffrey E. Burgess, ordained teacher. Ciola J. Griffin, ordained prophetess. And DeAndre L. Griffin, minister of music. And God is doing something special. Ordaining couples together. I believe, um, Bishop, we were the first couple that Bishop ordained together. And I remember the words so clear. Bishop Kirby spoke, the two that God has joined together, they will not be separated. Not by title, by ministry. They are one, and you are one. Yes. So we are thankful for what God is doing. Because we recognize and agree with what is already done in heaven, we have come to this sacred place for ministerial licensing. We pray that each one of you will feel the weight of God's presence as we feel it already, as you are formally and publicly acknowledging the call of God to accept your ministry. Realizing that God has set you apart to fulfill your destiny of service to the kingdom. And it is great. It is a great thing. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. And he gave himself some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, but for the edifying of the body of Christ. Bishop Peter is going to come and share promises of the candidates. As I read these promises, and you will answer. I do or I will. So we, as the church, recognize these being ordained as servants of Christ. I'm going to turn this this way so I can look at you. Since you have chosen to have relationship at this time with all nations apostleship network of ministries and have been accepted by its leaders as one examined and fulfilling all requirements and callings by God, you've now come to be licensed and ordained. God has called you and now you are here to accept the position and the responsibilities of being a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you trust in Jesus, your Savior, acknowledging Him as your Lord and the Lord of the world and head of the church and through Him believe in one God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the authoritative witness to Jesus Christ and God's word for your life and ministry? Will you govern your life by following the words and examples of the Lord Jesus and to love those around you with the forgiving and empowering love and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you serve the church with energy, intelligence, creativity, passion, and love, always leaning on the Holy Spirit? Will you be a faithful member of a congregation serving the body of Christ wherever you are? Will you be a faithful minister proclaiming the gospel and celebrating the sacraments, teaching the faith and caring for the people of God that God has given you? Will you, by the grace of God, 
be a faithful member of all nations apostleship network of ministries serving with love seeking the fellowship of those also called in this gathering when you use your gifts and resources to help build the lives of this community of leaders and to help work with the reformation in the church and transformation of the nations finally will you by the grace of god and the enabling of the holy spirit finish your course as jesus did on this earth when he said in john 17 for father i have finished the work you have given me to do and i glorify your name do you agree amen at this time we're going to ask the presbytery to come forward and we're going to lay hands on the candidates yes hallelujah
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let us go ahead and pray if there is a prophetic word. Pastor Robert, Bishop Robert, Pastor Diane, just whatever we open the gates of heaven, they're already open. Amen. So God just speak. You've already spoken. You yes. said this is a great thing. Yes, great thing. That is the word of the Lord. Yes. And so we bless you as we lay hands on each one. And we just thank you. Let's all come around and let's just lay hands. Hallelujah. 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 Or what you can do. 
before Jesus did anything, yes. any miraculous ministry, any teaching, the Father said, this is my son yes. whom I'm well pleased and he hadn't done anything. Yes. Yes. If you don't get enough honor, you'll be trying to get it from what you prophesy and what you do and who you are, your function. You'll be trying to get that honor. Honor, release, dishonor. Yes. It's like dying a, a thousand deaths. With, I mean, dying with a thousand cuts, little cuts. That's what dishonor does. It kills you little by little. And some of you have been cut. So I'm speaking over you. I'm speaking to you because this is honor. God is honoring you. He's restoring honor. Honor is healing you. Because someone is saying, I know who you are. And you've been jumping up and saying, pick me, choose me. God said, I, I know who you are. And this is the moment of the great day. So I just release that into your heart. Because it's going to be healing to your soul. To your soul. It's going to be a great release. A great release. You won't have to seek. You have it right now. Father is saying, I'm well pleased. I'm well pleased. You may not even think. But you're standing here and, and many thought you wouldn't even be able to make it to this place. Bitter words. So words don't hurt me, but they really hurt prophets. Really hurt prophets. They'll shut down a prophet. They won't speak for a year or two. Amen. I just pray right now that that's the healing right now. Heal. Heal right now. Heal. Because we are setting you in the proper place. At the proper time. In the name of Jesus. Thank you.
open. All you have to do is come and we'll make sure everything is ready for you and for your team. And you're going to just be a blessing to this city and to this nation. So we bless you. And we thank you for the gift of God that you are. In Jesus' name.
as um, the certificates are being put in your hands, I'm going to read a charge to you. First, I charge you to serve. You can play softly behind me. Yes, thank you, Reverend Aretha. Jesus said I was naked. You clothed me. I was in prison. I was sick. You visited me. First, he said I was hungry. You took me in. I was a stranger. You, I was thirsty. You gave me drink. I was a stranger. You took me in. I was naked. You clothed me. I was sick. You came to visit me. I was in prison, and you came to me. And the disciples didn't understand. When did we do all of this? When you did it to the least of these. You did it for me. I charge you to serve the least of these and all that God has put before you. And there will be great ones before you, God says also. But you'll serve all. You'll serve all. I charge you to obey God, to walk after the Lord your God, fear him, keep his commandments, obey his voice. No matter how difficult it seems what he's telling you to do is, you must obey God. I charge you to follow God exclusively. We live in a day and age where the church in many ways seems to be in a season of 5150. Yes. But I charge you to follow God exclusively. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. A stranger they won't follow. Hear his voice. I charge you to be rooted and grounded in God's love. There's a difference in living what we call Christian life and going to church and serving and doing our ministries and being rooted and grounded. That's where your ministry will flourish. That's where your ministry will grow and develop and be a blessing to the nations, to the world. It's when you are rooted and grounded in his love because when you are rooted and grounded in his love, then you can liberally release that love to others. I charge you to persevere. <laughs> Not to grow weary in well-doing. Because in due season, if you don't give up, that's the key in that verse. If you don't give up, you reap a harvest. And we're here to tell you the harvest may not look like what you thought it should look like. But it looks like what heaven says it should be. And I charge you to make disciples. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe everything. All things that I've commanded you. And he said, when you do that, I'm with you. If you don't do that, he's not with you. Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. And I charge you to be fruitful. You did not choose me, Jesus said in John 15, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go out and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. And I charge you to preach and teach and do your ministry. So your ministry and music is equal to the preaching and teaching. You're just doing it with a, a keyboard or a string or whatever it is that God has placed in your hands. There's an anointing, a special anointing. You're going to see a different anointing. I feel it even in my hand as I speak it. After this day, after this service, a great thing is going to happen in the anointing of your ministry. Of music. A great thing, a great thing is going to happen greater. So I charge you to teach, to preach, to do all the ministry that God has put before you. And to be watchful. Bishop, he gave us such a wonderful message. Don't let the enemy come along to discourage you because he will. Don't listen to what the devil wants to say. Just hear what God is saying. Oh. And say yes. 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 We want to serve you communion. And I realize I put your 
certificates in your hands. But we want this that we felt very, very important, that this was very important, that we would serve you your first communion. This is the body of Christ that was broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ that was shed for you. We know this represents so much that Jesus did that we appropriate. This is a reminder you know, I, I have to teach sometimes. This is a reminder. These are symbols that helps us to understand that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities and chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. So, would you please take the bread, lift it up. We lift it up to the Father. Do you want to? We lift it up and we thank you for what you've done. What you've already established in heaven now is released into the earth. Take a meat. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this sacred time, God. Thank you so much. Lift up the cup. Thank you, God, as we lift up the cup that represents the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. As we go forth today, from this moment on, we're going to remember your blood was shed, and we appropriate everything that your blood covers. We appropriate, and we receive that. You may take up the cup. And God, we give you praise for it all. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Reverend Catherine, Reverend Jeff, Prophetess Siona, and Minister Dre, God bless you and strengthen you. You're in the palm of his hands. I think you're going to render a song to us now as we get ready to go back to our seats. In following Bishop Daniels and Bishop Kirby with closing the box. Let the church say praise the Lord. Praise the Thank you. 